Wisconsin team that, by the way, Texas beat Wisconsin 3-1 mm-hmm. last night. Uh, got off to a good start. By the way, that's kind of an oddity for UT. They've not gotten off to great starts in matches. Get off to a good start when the first uh, set, 25-22. Struggle with a little bit of a lull. And I tell you what, Wisconsin's front line blockers blocked. And they're they had, big. They had six blocks. They got a 6-9 and a 6-7 player on their front line athletic yes i feel i feel like the basketball team should re- look at some of their players have an athleticism test mm-hmm. and find out if the basketball team has the best players mm-hmm. because their volleyball team athletes yeah i was so athletic. impressed but athletic madison skinner oh yeah oh. Athletic. Uh, yeah. so lots of credit to jared ellie and his staff uh, and the ladies for adjusting and i, I tell you what they're I'm sitting there watching set three. By the way, when Madison Skinner sets an NCAA record f- with six aces, <laughs> yeah, um, in route to uh, Texas, going up by as much as ten in the third set. Uh, by the way, they then carried that on and went up by as much as nine in the fourth set on the way to closing it out three to one. Um, but yes, Madison Skinner, um, a freshman, no. Uh, junior. No, um, I'm uh, I'm thinking of the setter. Oh uh, yes, the Emily. S- Emily, yes. Mm-hmm. Um, but- she's and she's taken over. I think she's six one. She's six one. Yes. Yeah, as a setter. As a, yeah, exactly. Which is <laughs> yes, not what you see. No, you know? no. But she uses it as an advantage when she does those dump overs. That's right. And because she's so tall, she's already over the net, and so she can see things that shorter she, setters can't see. She was four for six on dump overs last night, which that's a great weapon to have. To have someone who's six one, who um, with, with if you have a smaller setter, um, and they do a dump over. You kind of see it because they leave their feet sooner. She didn't have to leave her feet really to no. do a dump over, and she, or, or she can do it so quickly that you you don't even realize. Oh my gosh, she's left her feet. I'm in trouble now. Yeah, I mean, that's, yeah. Um, and, but and I was going to mention just like mm-hmm. going back to Madison. You said you know she broke the record for the for the aces in mm-hmm. a game or in a match in a NCAA tournament. But to be able to do that while also being the most lethal back row attacker mm. in college volleyball right now. Yeah. I mean, that's just a cheat code. Like, she, <laughs> it's not fair. When she comes straight down the middle of the court off that back row spike and she can go either direction with it, um, she's. It, it was a thing of beauty to watch. But the, 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 the thing that I believe turned play around in set number three last night was the slide out to Asia. Mm. And she was four for five, I think, on the night it on is, slide outs. It is the most if, – if you so a slide out essentially is um, a, a, an attacker, a, a hitter, coming from one side of the setter to the other um, along the, uh, the sideline, and the setter just kind of s- flicking it back over her head. Yeah. And while she's moving in the air – um, she's still able to go down the line if she wants to, but going across court, which is what Asia did most of last night, mm-hmm. is so lethal because your blockers see three hitters on one side of the court, and then one hitter heads to the other side, and the blockers don't aren't rea- they're just not they're not able to react fast enough. They're out of position. Asia, um, they, they you know, of course, Asia O'Neill. Uh, Jermaine O'Neal's daughter, yeah. a six-year player this year, mm-hmm. um, a, a, an invitee to Team USA camp. Just uh, got drafted number one overall in the pro uh, that's volleyball That's the ultimate league. flex. Okay. I mean, that's... Yeah. For the if first I, ever volleyball league, if I was her dad, number one overall. I, I'd be leading with that. <laughs> I'm getting the tattoo. By the way, <laughs> what, what kind of life is Jermaine O'Neal li- living where he's flying back and forth between Tampa and the Bahamas because his son is playing in a basketball tournament in the Bahamas and he's the coach. Yeah, I know. That's <laughs> crazy. He's the yeah. coach. That's so, a crazy thing. What um, a life, huh? Yes, exactly. <laughs> Proud dad right there. Proud dad right there, exactly. So if you guys are not fans of NCAA volleyball and hearing – if if we didn't excite you from what we just said, if you guys were not watching it, I don't know what else we could do for you. Yeah. But I can tell you what it does, what it's done for me. I'm going to invite you two out to Zilker Park. I'm a beach boy. I've played a lot of sandball. I'm ready to go play. I'm ready. 
these girls got me hyped. Yeah. I I, I want to go. I want to go out there. I'm a sand guy myself. I've always when I go to Zilker, unfortunately, I always get pulled into Ultimate Frisbee games, mm -hmm. and I've never. Every time I'm there for Ultimate, and I always say to myself, "Oh, next time, you know what? I'm coming. I'm gonna hit the sand pit," and I never do it. <laughs> but now, I something's got to happen. Have to. We, we gotta get out there, and then I want to work on my serve. I gotta jump serve, but. Uh, I, I don't think I can get six aces in a row. Well, I yeah. want to know how many inches off the ground. No, it doesn't matter. It doesn't <laughs> matter. Know, doesn't matter. No, <laughs> see, it doesn't matter. It's not about the size of the vertical. It's about what that ball does. It's the motion of the ball. It's the motion in the ocean. Ah, uh, here you go. Here you go. <laughs> size don't matter. No, it, the motion don't matter. Yeah, yeah, the motion, motion of the ocean. ocean. That, it's what that ball do. What that, what that ball do. That's what you got to be asking me. What that ball do. <laughs> mm. I hope it goes over the net. That, yo, oh, it's going over. I say, I oh, I got placement. That. That's my thing. I got placement. Okay. But uh, man, I would love. You know what? Let's let's pull some connects. Let's see if we can get in on a, a you know a little, little happy game with the ladies when they get back. No, we're getting we're getting can throttled we get a, if that happens. Can we get an invite? About going against UT oh, wait, 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 hold on. No, no, we are participating, and we are going to be on stack teams. Okay, okay, yeah, I like yeah. that. I, I just like that. I just want to just a friendly. It's a friendly. I appreciate that. And uh, look out below, your boy is. I've never been dunked on. And I ain't getting that spike ain't coming for me. I'll catch a hammy in the middle of the jump and then cower away. I'm a turtle. Uh, he, you gonna leave us out the drive? That way, that way. Look, I've seen your calves. Something tells me you got some hops, uh, Travis. Okay, okay. So I, I, I do still have my calves. I was, I, I was a high jumper. Yeah. Okay. Oh, see, really? I read, yeah. I read that perfectly. Wow. Yes. But you gotta remember. Looking at his man's calves. I'm 52, <laughs> and I've got a 30 year old repaired ACL. <sighs> That, uh, in fact, right now is throbbing. I mean, it's <laughs> Even now, yeah. like right now. Throbbing, what an adjective. That's because yes. he knows the rain's coming. It does. Yes. It, 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 has, been, it has been swollen for two days now <sighs> and started throbbing today. The rain is coming today. It will rain today. <laughs> yeah. I'm guaranteeing it because yeah. my knee is telling me so. Hey, KVU. <laughs> I, I'm not trying to put nobody out of a job. Uh -oh. I'm trying to enhance your broadcast. Yeah, yeah, yeah fact. You, you, you see what you got right here? We he had on the graphic it. last night, 80%. Yeah, that's right. right? On the <laughs> well, well, Travis said 100. I know, he did. <laughs> yeah. He did. He got all so, in. I, I'm just saying, I want you to be the talent scout and just take him back with you and just offer him to the rest of KVU. Just whenever his knee starts throbbing. Exactly. I mean, this talent right that's here. Right. Put 100% on the graph. That's right. <laughs> Sounds good. Because Travis's ACL says, <laughs> what, what the ACL do? <laughs> Sunday. Sun, here's, here's, here's the good news, bad news, right? Uh -huh. For me and Mr. Oklahoma, the bad news. Uh -oh. Sunday, 2 p.m. on KVU 24, Your our ABC affiliate, Texas Versus Nebraska. So I'm going to have to get the rabbit ears back out. Yeah, I'm sorry. That's okay. That's all right. Hey, it's a little bunny talk. That's exactly. So, um, yeah, 2 o'clock, ABC. Actually, ESPN Plus will probably carry it. So they I can probably just get it off. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. I can just get off of ESPN Plus. Well, I mean, you can watch it on ABC, uh, Fox. Oh, you, go ahead, you, go, you go ahead and okay. get those rabbit ears out. <laughs> 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 or, or go purchase them. There's uh, there's some electronic stores that still have them. Really? Like, like it's, it's on the shelf. Like Radio Shack? Oh, uh, if you can find a Radio Sorry, Shack, yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, if you can find one. Hey, I'm not saying, I'm not saying over in Mississippi they didn't get the memo, mm. and there's one, there's a Rogue store still going on. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 you know, you for, know for people that, over there for that person whose man cave was a retro cave. <laughs> yeah, I'm not saying that it couldn't happen. But yeah, Sunday, huh? Yeah, it's gonna be a great matchup. Oh. I mean, could I watch that Nebraska game before Texas played? And I mean, they look. Unstoppable, Nebraska does. They've only lost one set. Yes, in the whole tournament. I, 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 I didn't watch the Nebraska game, um, but it wasn't because I didn't. I wasn't interested in finding out who, because I felt pretty confident. Texas, like, like we talked about, Texas struggles early in set one, but Texas has really been playing well, mm -hmm. um, and so I was pretty confident that it was going to be a good match against Wisconsin. I was pretty confident they'd be able to get the victory. Um, but for some reason, I decided to watch the Vegas Raiders oh, man. and the L.A. Chargers and watched uh, L.A. get completely dismantled. Any, any news updates? We have, we have any news updates on coaches firing or anything? Still not fired. Still not fired. Boy, I, I don't I think, know how he got on the plane. I mean, it is only so – it's only 8-13 He's got there. the out. But His I'm, quarterback is hurt. No, bro. That's his out. He's been on the high seat for – 
seemed like since last year. It's over. Like it's it's been like he should have been gone last off. It's season. over. He Brandon needed to Staley take the for train LA back. Chargers, if you don't know who we're talking about, I mean, getting down forty two to nothing at halftime. I get it, but how much does this show for Justin Herbert about how much he's been saving that team and just yes, sir. keeping them in the game? Yes, sir. Because clearly without him, they are gone. Every year he's been in the league, he's been saving that team. Three fumbles in the first half. Um, well, one, uh, actually two of them, really good defensive strip plays. Yep. The third one, the punt returner just gets the ball taken out of his hands <laughs> while he's getting driven – backwards on a punt return like he just gave yeah, up like a little kid like he thought maybe the whistle was gonna blow or something and just they just took the ball away from him mm-hmm. and he sat there he just lowered it like like it looked, <laughs> i could just see his little puffed out you know how they do do that little sob where you uh yeah. you flick your bottom lip out of your teeth or whatever that's i can just see that's what he was doing it was ugly by the way any cowboy fans out there missing kellen moore I knew I knew I knew there was gonna be some jokes from you. I didn't think we'd get them this early. I thought I I could I thought you might I actually even thought you may give him some love and be like, I'm sorry <laughs> Kellen had to go through that. I know, right? I didn't know which way you were gonna go, but I thought there were gonna be some jokes and I thought they were coming from me. <laughs> yeah, no. that's crazy. Sheesh. But I mean you're right though. I mean they, they looked minute. bad. He put twenty one points up. They they had seven and going into the fourth quarter. Stick yes. through let's, a couple touchdowns. Not, and, I mean, it was, they had fourteen points in the last ten minutes. Two hundred and forty. When they were already down by it? fifty points. I we're can't. Not, there's no count. positive spin. We're not count I, can't, that. I can't go with none of that. Austin Eckler had to be schemed against. Like you didn't want Austin to get outside and and kick your butt. None of this is nobody. The Raiders didn't have Jimmy Garoppolo. Yeah, yeah. They had a sick Devonte Adams. Yeah. They didn't have Josh Jacobs. Yes. And they still put up 63 points on you. I don't want to hear nothing. And they let the foot <laughs> off the gas because they stopped throwing. Yeah, they could At have. the end. Dur- so so um, during that, especially the first quarter, when they started coughing the ball up and then the second quarter is there, they kept, they kept going over to shots of Jimmy G <laughs> on the sidelines, all dressed out as the backup quarterback. Always. Like, <laughs> Always. Just watching. Yeah. His backup go in and uh, lead touchdown drive after touchdown drive. I thought it was a little um, – which, by the way, um, it, you know, I don't know where Vegas plans to go at the quarterback position going into next year. Obviously, they still have a decision to make at the head coaching position. Yeah. Um, do you stay with uh, Antonio? Do you do you move on? Do you look somewhere else? It'll be interesting to see what they decide to do. Yeah, I think that was a big move too. Like for, I think t- when I say big move, I mean it was a big win for coaches. Mm-hmm. Uh, I guess you could say tenure. Mm-hmm. You could tell that the team after losing three straight games, yeah. like, no, they wanted to win it for him. They wanted to yes. be on prime time. You got shut out the week before. You lost 3 nothing. Mm-hmm. Probably one of the worst football games ever to be played. I'm glad I didn't watch it. I know, me too. But they come back. You know, they put up 63. And you can just see the love for Coach after the game and just how much they really wanted it for him, I felt like. Because they know, like, if they don't win, he won't get the job. Right. That's, that's for sure. And so, so, so you guys – you guys are interested in him possibly getting the job he to go from linebackers coach to head coach. Yeah. I mean look at You guys aren't against look at you Jamaica, know, right. that's part of the that's part of the part of the coach prime effect. People are like, Oh, well he doesn't have any tenure, he doesn't have any time. So I was just kinda curious if you guys are, are coming from that because I got a lot of that when it came to Coach Prime and I wanted to know which way you guys were going when it came to that? Because this guy I've clearly has never been a head coach. You know, it, it's it's interesting because um, you're right, D'Amico Ryan. D'Amico Ryan's prime example. Uh, Dan Campbell. Yes. Um, we we there are coaches currently in the NFL who, by the way, are doing pretty well. Maybe a little shine is off of Dan Campbell right now. Yeah. But overall, I still think he's. A I mean, great he's leader for the Detroit. NFC North. It, exactly. Like, <laughs> he still got those I mean, wins. Those division. wins don't go away. Um, there's something to be said for the fact that um, your head coach doesn't necessarily need to be 
the defense guru or the offense guru of your team. They just need to be able to manage and lead the team yes. and then hire the defensive guy and the offensive guy to run those sides of the ball. Yes. Uh, and certainly, you know, I, that has not been the route teams have been taking right now. In fact, most teams have been going the offensive route, finding the best – the best quarterbacks coach for the hot new coach who took over this job and that job, and yeah. that way we can get in early on it. And that's why Cliff Kingsbury had a job in the first place. That's why, you know, all this. But there's something to be said for find the guy that your players believe in mm-hmm. and then let him go hire an offensive coach and a defensive coach and let them do their jobs. I don't mind it at all. If, if they decide to go with him at the end of the season, I think is. As an outsider with no skin in the game, I can look at it right now and go, clearly the players love playing for him. Yeah. If I'm a Raiders fan, I probably look at it and go, yeah, I'm fine with it too. The, they, the, the team looks like they actually care right now. They look like Raiders. They, they do. Yes, they do. <laughs> they look like Raiders. And the fans are happy. Yeah. The fans are engaged uh, on social media, in chat rooms. I have seen – I used to live in Los Angeles, and I know they're not there anymore, but a lot of those fans are still rabid, and those are the people in my circle, so I get to see it from them, and a lot of them are still supportive, even though the Raiders are up there in Vegas, and so I get to see that swell of support, and I, I, for that reason alone, I think he should get the job. I think I know they said they're going to interview everyone, but I think he should get the job until he fails. It's not like they have a track history like the Steelers of having three coaches in the last 40 years. Mm -hmm. So, okay, if it doesn't work, start it over, do it again. Yeah, I kind of I have that same sentiment. And it's not just because of what he's doing for this football team when it comes to a chemistry perspective, when it comes to a rallying behind a leader. Yes, those are all great. But I also want to give him credit for like what he's doing with this team on the field. Mm-hmm. I mean, remember, he's a linebacker's coach. That's right. Yeah. He's a defensive guy. And to be honest, his side of the ball, the last five games have been really good. Amazing. Mm-hmm. I mean, you held the Chargers to seven points into the fourth quarter when the game was already oh, over. Was Defense fine. scored multiple touchdowns last night. Mm-hmm. That's on him. Last week, he lost 3 nothing. You're not the offensive guru. Right. You lost 3 nothing. Yeah. You held the Vikings to three points. That's right. your side of the ball. Week before that, Chiefs, that's a one anomaly. They scored 31, but the Chiefs always hang numbers on the Raiders for some reason. They just yeah. own the Raiders. Before that, you know, they played the, the Dolphins, held them to 20 points, mm-hmm. which is sure did. way lower than their season average. And then lastly, before that game, the Jets scored 12 points against them. They won that game. Jets just scored 30 on Texans. So, I mean – the defensive side of the ball has been phenomenal yeah. for the Raiders. And that also, that defense doesn't have that much talent, if we're being honest. You have Max Crosby. We got Crosby, yeah. You got Crosby. Yeah. You know. But. <laughs> like, yeah, you're right. I can't go deeper you know, than that. Who, who, are you, with, you know, who are you thinking with about? I want to speak on. And so that's my thing. Like, with the lesser talent and still being able to be a dominant defense, that's his – that's his realm. I think uh, he should get some credit for that as well, as along with rallying the team behind him, along with getting the fans involved on social media. He's doing a lot for this organization, and I, I just hope it's not like a Steve Wilkes situation where, you know, in Carolina last year, they started winning games to end the year, and they didn't hire him. Mm-hmm. And now look at Carolina. Yeah. Last in the league. And so all the team loved Steve Wilkes last year. They loved him. But he didn't get the job. Yeah, and that kind of hurt a lot of Panthers fans and Panthers players, and now they're worse in the league. So I, I don't know. I, I just think you got to hire so, the guy that's already in the building. So they put that up last night. So, so what I said, I, I want to go on the other side of what I said. What I said was, if give him the job, if he messes up, it's not like you guys are shy on get, going out and searching for new coaches. But let's spin that the other way. There is a money thing, man. Yes. So there is another thing. Uh, Did you guys see last night, if you kept watching the game, they put the definition of chargering up Mm. to say what chargering is. And that is to to lose in a spectacular fashion when hopes are high. Could they raider this up? (laughs) Could they raider this up by saying, by Mark Davis, the owner, son of Al Davis, saying, well, you know what? I'm good. Uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go for my guy. I want to go with a spectacular hire. I'm going to woo Harbaugh out of just throwing that out there. Do you think they could Raider it up? 
I don't think so. I think because Mark already learned his lesson from the last hire. You know, Josh McDaniels was a splash hire. I felt like <laughs> guy has a big resume, knows what he's doing. You thought he, mm. he knew what he was doing as a head coach. Um, and I just think also, remember two years ago when they had Rick, uh, forgot his last name, starts with a B, but a defensive coordinator two years ago when they were about to go into the playoffs, he took over for the team and the Raiders started winning those last couple games, missed the playoffs by one game because of the Chargers, mm. that whole debacle. Um, and so they didn't hire the defensive coordinator back then. And you hire, uh, what's his name? Josh McDaniels. Mm-hmm. Yes. You saw how that turned out. So I think Mark Davis already did that and was like, actually, let's not do it again. And let's not mess up again. And hopefully he's smart enough to learn from his, his mistakes. And also, like, I don't think they have the money to go out there and pay for a big time coach. That was the whole reason why they took so long to fire McDaniels. Ah. Because it's like, well, we gotta pay him a severance. The money we gotta pay. They're not. So you take not. the young guy who right now, without that deep resume, cannot command a a huge sum. Yeah, or, or who's the buyout. You know, Kanan McDaniels has this hefty buyout. Yes. You gotta pay him and pay the next coach. So the last thing you want to do is have to pay McDaniels, the next coach that you may have picked wrong, and then find another coach after that. So, yeah, I think you go Antonio Pierce right now, trust the guy that's in the building, and not go for that splash hire. Before we get off of this, can we just talk about how exciting Vegas looked last night? Uh, Can we talk about how exciting Vegas is right now? And how excited I am for them with that new arena that they showed last night, 2028. Mm -hmm. It's going to be up. (sighs) Vegas is on fire right now. It is. I'm pretty excited. It is. Man. May- maybe they can someday get their tourism ramped up. <laughs> They're um, going to need it. Find a reason for people Sheesh. to actually go out Together. there. Jeez. Yeah, you know. <laughs> Why would you? Hey, how about Max Crosby, though, going on a desk with no shirt on <laughs> well, and a cigar oh, really? after the game? I didn't see that. Oh, my goodness. I, I'm, I'm okay with it. I'm cool with it, too. Yeah. <laughs> Did they I'm show like, his knee? Did you see his knee? It was no. gush. It, like, it was, that wasn't a drip. Like, it was running down his leg, and I was like, I, I thought it was just like a, a rug burn. What what kind of what, how how did he get injured? I, <laughs> did someone stab him? And they showed a picture um, from two weeks ago when, after his injury, and his his le- his knee was swelled up literally twice the size of his other leg, um, and he played three days later, and yeah. he's still out there playing. He must get this thing dr- drained. Yeah, like every other day. We were talking volleyball. It was swollen up the size of a volleyball yeah, mm. it was. in comparison to the other kneecap. All right, we need to get to a break. Rich Basaccia, by the way. Rich Thank Bisaccia. you, Rich Basaccia. Yes, Rich Basaccia. He's now at Green Bay. Special teams. He's a special teams guy, yeah. but he took over for Gruden mm. when Gruden's emails came That's out what I was about, about and Gruden. relates to the whole Daniel Snyder thing. We got to get to a, a break. We'll be right back on the other side, right here on the Fans View KAZI 88. We're back on the Fans View, KAZI, 88.7, Travis Kent, Douglas Washington, Corey Mose from KVU 24, Jay Hunt on the board. And we got a very special guest coming up right now. We've got him on the line. The head coach of our Austin Spurs play out at the Cedar Park Center. If you haven't been out to a game, you need to get out to one. Coach Will Voigt. Coach, appreciate you joining us. Yeah, thanks for having me, guys. Awesome. So um, you've got uh, – let's, let's talk a little bit about your background first, and we're going to talk about your Spurs, all right? Um, first of all, uh, some NBA experience. Um, by the way, a little Austin experience as an assistant with Rick Barnes. I'm going to give you credit for the development of TJ Ford. That's okay. <laughs> I'll take all of it. <laughs> um, and a lot of overseas experience as well. I'd, I'd love to hear um, your take um, as – the NBA obviously has become a worldwide sport. Um, would love to hear your thoughts uh, from the coaching perspective of the development of overseas players and how that has um, made the the world game of basketball stronger. Yeah, well, shoot, where where do you want me to start? Those, <laughs> those are there are a lot of things to cover. Yeah, um, I, yeah. You, sorry about. I, I'm, I'm not not really narrowing it down for you, but you know, we got <laughs> we, when you ha, when you have Luka Doncic come in. You, ha, I mean, obviously, our we're, we're seeing the MVP won nearly every other year by uh, by a foreign player. Uh, the game of basketball in the last 20 years has changed so much, um, and I just think it's it's the it's a testament to the the popularity of the game won. Uh, and and the strength of the coaching and the strength of the development of over, overseas players. 
Yeah, well, you know, it's uh, I mean, it's a different model, and you got to go back all the way to the dream team. Um, you know, obviously that 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 Olympic team kind of sparked the interest of basketball throughout the throughout the world. Um, and I think you know, to their credit, these countries had to figure out ways to gain competitive advantages. Um, one of the things that that we're fortunate to have here is just a a big pool of players to choose from and in a lot of ways you know in the u.s our development to the highest level is kind of a game of attrition so you know we we just play and play and play and play starts in aau and and basically the best players just kind of continue to survive and move on but if you're you know let's say you're serbia you're you know you're a country of five million people you know how are you going to be competitive and it's really the opposite approach so Mm -hmm. you can't you can't just wait for the cream of the crop to rise. You have to be very intentional about how you're developing and then also make sure that you keep as many players participating for as long as possible, right? So like the notion of, of tryouts and cutting and that kind of stuff would be crazy to, to these other countries. So they really go about it in a completely different way. Um, you know, and, and I think... I think you're seeing the benefits of that. So in their mind, if you know, if if a player shows up and is interested in basketball, then they are committed to that player for as long as that player wants to wants to be a basketball player. You know, so mm-hmm. I think I think when you're playing playing that long game, then the development really changes. So that's how that's how a Jokic can you know develop ball handling and passing skills and shooting skills and all these things because. He's not in a survival mode where, uh, you know, I'm, I'm 11 years old. I could be down on the block or otherwise, you know, I'm not good enough as the guard right now and I'm going to get cut and I'm not going to make this team. So, you know, I think, I think that that approach uh, ends up, you know, admittedly with, with more skilled players. And I think now, you know, you're seeing that. And I, I don't think that's a trend that's going to continue. You know, I mean, like you said, talking about the top players in the NBA and the majority are, are, you know, not from the U S I think until we kind of change our, our outlook on how we develop, uh, that that's probably going to be a trend for a while. Hey coach, uh, Corey Moe's here. Just wanted to dive into your team particularly. Uh, you talked about cuts and stuff like that yesterday. I made a tough decision waving Jabari rice, uh, but then also picking up a, a great player in David Duke jr. And so, just talk to me and walk me through that decision to to wave Jabari and how tough that was, knowing that you know awesome kid uh, went to UT, but then also acquiring a talent like David Duke. What does that do for the team? Yeah, well, um, you know we're gonna find out. So we're he- heading to our shoot around right now. He uh, he he joined us uh, last night, so we're gonna try to throw as many things as possible at him, see what sticks, but. Um, you know the G League is uh, 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 a very fluid situation for all these guys. So, you know whether it's call ups or you know trades, releases, whatever it might be. Um, you know my focus is just to work with the guys that we have and try to develop them the best that we can, and you know trust our front office and the decisions that they make in terms of how how they're putting our roster together. Um, you know I can tell you, uh, having having watched film on on David uh, and met with him, you know, you, you already mentioned him. He's a high level basketball player. Um, you know, he, he was great last year with Long Island. Uh, and picked up where he left off this year with Delaware and, and, you know, handling a lot more point guard duties with them uh, this season. So, you know, as you said, we're getting a really high level guy, um, you know, a competitor uh, who, who plays hard on both ends of the ball. Uh, and, you know, hopefully he can, he can help elevate our our group. Hey, Coach Douglas Washington here, Coach. For the listeners, I, I want them to be as excited as I am, and I want them to come out, fill the stands, because Coach, I'd like for you to talk about Sandro Mamuklashvili, Coach mm-hmm. against Texas. Him dropping thirty four points, twenty three boards, taking three or uh, thirteen three pointers, making five of them. What a talent, Coach! What what can you tell us about Sandro? Wow. <laughs> well, first of all, credit to you for pronouncing his last name correctly. <laughs> that's that's not an easy one. I, I just go by Mamu to save myself yeah. the trouble. 
um yeah no he 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 was phenomenal um and you know that's that's really what we're here for you know give those guys opportunities to to come up with us and you know find a rhythm uh develop their game so i think credit to him like he you know first of all he requested that he join us mm -hmm. um you know you know I, i think that speaks volumes about him that you know he just wanted to play and he wanted you know he wanted to get those reps in in live action and to be honest there's a lot of young players and they're just kind of all about that nba life and it wouldn't have done that so i think it starts there um but just like you said i, mean, I think you saw all the talent on display yes. so it, you know he's a really unique player uh, i was pretty familiar with him from the world cup so you know he played really well for his national team uh georgia uh in the philippines um you know for the world cup and and kind of displayed a lot of those skills that we saw in that game uh and you know i mean that you you always hope as a coach that you can say you know hey we had we had him then and yeah you know i don't know if one game is going to be the trigger point for him but like you said you got to see it all on display and hopefully that's something that he can translate to the nba Coach, you were, uh, you were you were talking about um, as Corey was asking about uh, uh, David Duke coming in, um, and you talked about being overseas and and U.S. player development and a lot of different things. Coaching in the G League, there's a lot of transactions. You're going to coach a lot of players every year, um, foreign, U.S. Um, you're going to a lot of guys. You're going to have very limited tape on. You're going to be laying eyes on them uh, at a, on an a, on a off day practice or a shoot around. Talk a little bit about the challenges um, and, and why you uh, embrace the challenge of coaching at the G League level. Yeah, I mean, it's unique uh, for sure. And, and, you know, if you look at my coaching career, I think a lot of it has been similar where – whether it's a national team, whether it's, you know, taking over a, a European pro team mid season, um, it's about adjusting on the fly. And, you know, I know that that's helped me uh, from a, from a coaching standpoint tremendously, right. That, you know, I'm not, I'm not applying a system to just anybody that comes in the door. It's a, it's about figuring out each individual or each team, what's going to work best for them. How do you put them in, in a position to succeed? Feed, how do you help them develop uh and, and so you know that's really what the g league's all about you know like you said guys guys come and go so much that you're you're you know constantly uh i think shuffling and you know identifying what group can play well together what you know what are the certain things that for that you know that group is a, is a fit and you know maybe a different group of guys needs different things so You know, at the end of the day, um, I do think coaches is about servant leadership. You know, I think you, you really got to identify how you help people. Um, I think the fact that so many different people come through your door in a G League season, uh, it, it, it's a great thing from the coaching standpoint. And, so, and on that note, Coach, I just want to kind of dive into what that day-to-day -day looks like when you, when you do get a player maybe 24 hours before a game or even like the day of a game he comes in how do you adjust on the fly like that what's what's the game plan for you when you try to formulate this offense around new players that are coming in less than 24 hours before a game yeah well uh, let, let me take you through the, the current situation mm -hmm. so uh you know i got a call um about 11:30 at night <laughs> saying say that we had a transaction and uh so you know i immediately dove into film on, on david and uh tried to you know up to speed as best on his game and his strengths and how to best use them um we got on a plane the next morning uh as did he and he you know arrived here uh, i think about 7:30, 8 o'clock at night uh last night spent about an hour with him uh getting to know him um and kind of touching on some some basketball things for him so he could have at least a little bit of a comfort level uh and then you know as we speak i'm, I'm on the bus and the shoot around uh we're gonna you know spend that hour now going over the things that that we showed on film and hopefully give him enough comfort level that he can come in and, and be productive for us tonight so 
so that conversation was over fast. the phone sorry to cut you off just trying to get some clarification uh the with david yeah no no he's here so he arrived last night so when he when he got to our hotel i met with him in person gotcha yeah yeah but but to your point uh you know you're you're adapting quickly and as best as you can and you know credit to these players too right that mm. he had to pack up everything <laughs> he, he owned jump, jump on a plane head to a new team and and we'll be lacing them up for us tonight so <laughs> Like, you know these guys yeah i mean these guys deserve a lot of credit and their fortitude to kind of manage these things coach douglas again uh I, this is a this is a, a two-faceted question uh about the challenges so i'd like to talk to you about and, and unfortunately coach i'm going to ask you about the challenges of a team that's in the league with you mexico city so i'm curious about the challenges of playing them uh with uh yeah, this is a whole nother demographic. This is a whole nother country. And then I'd like to uh, talk about the challenges of playing that team because that roster, you got the you got the manimal. You got Kenneth Farid on that. You got Michael Carter Williams. You got Juan Toscano Anderson who who was uh, in the NBA. You got some some NBA players on that roster. That's a challenge. So could you talk about those two challenges? Uh, sorry, guys, I cut out um, oh, okay. in the beginning part of that. Could you? I caught the NBA part, but that's right. the first part. Could oh, you repeat that? Yeah. The, so the first challenge, I was hoping that you could you could elaborate on the distance, Mexico City, a whole other country. So that challenge, and then the challenge of that team and their roster with those NBA players. And I didn't mention them off. I'm sure you're familiar, but uh, I was always a fan of the Manimal. So seeing Kenneth Fareed there, and he's still playing ball. Uh, you know, he's still that athletic creature, but, uh, what, wh what could you say about those two challenges coach? Yeah. Um, well, you know, first of all, credit to them, uh, you know, great team experienced team. You, yes. you touched on it, you know, NBA level players. I mean, Juan Toscano, I understand just signed with Sacramento for the year. So, mm -hmm. you know, that, that gives you an idea. <laughs> yeah. um, Gets him out and, of there. Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I mean, honestly, with that 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 was a hard one for us, and that that is part of the, you know, what makes it tough in the G League. So we played, uh, we played that the night before. Uh, we were on a bus at 4 a.m. Uh, to to catch a flight that morning, and so, you know, as as players, I mean, shoot, even as coaches, it takes a while to kind of come down from the adrenaline after a game. Um, so you know i don't know about i don't know about the players but you, you know just myself i don't think i went to sleep until probably 1 one thirty, and you know i'm up two hours later yeah uh so you know everybody's heading into it sleep deprived and then and then you add to that you know mexico city is at seven thousand feet Elevation. above sea level <laughs> 68 yeah. olympics <laughs> <laughs> yeah so so we we unfortunately were living it um you know, it was it, it was tough. So that first game, it was like we were running in mud, and we played a, a really good team. Uh, and then, you know, we we had two games there, and we started to get our legs a little bit in that second game. And then, of course, we're right back on a plane, and yeah. you know, heading back to the U.S. for the next one. So that is that is the challenge of the G League. You know, sometimes the the travel can be difficult, um, and especially when you run into a great team like that. Okay. And we're, since we're on the topic of other teams around the league, I want to discuss the conversation around the G League Ignite and how do you see from your perspective that organization helping out young high school kids so they don't have to go to college? And what are your thoughts on that whole program over there and, and what the NBA is trying to do for high schoolers? Yeah, I mean, I think, you know, obviously with Scoot uh, and, you know, his success and uh, it's just going to get bigger and bigger. Um you know the the landscape of basketball is i think always changing and there's definitely a, a, i think a shift uh, in terms of where that development is coming from and you know we talked about that earlier right where the you know, the international models have always been driven by the professional clubs so you know this is an example of that and, you know obviously it's just one just one team but uh I, you know, I think it's great what they're doing, and, and you know, it could be interesting to see as we move forward. So, 
you know, for example, in in Europe, it'd be like as if as if the San Antonio Spurs controlled the development of every youth player in in the area. <laughs> you know, so between you know, so rather than AAU, high school, college, it's kind of all in the umbrella of the pro team. So, yeah. and that's how everywhere else in the world does it. You know, we're the only place in the world where it's kind of fragmented. Um, Why do you think that is? So I think, I, you know, that's a great question. I just, I, I think, you know, obviously for for us, college athletics um, holds a special place that it, it just doesn't mm-hmm. really. Outside of the Philippines, um, there's no other place in the world that I think embraces college athletics. Uh, so I think there's that component that has to be factored, and and you know obviously there's money involved there. Yeah. Um, but you know I think the G League Ignite shows what can be done. You know, so it, it's a professional setting for these kids, um, and you're seeing you know more and more players coming out of it. Obviously, we have. Them in, in CD Sissoko, mm-hmm. uh, and I think it's you know it's a great avenue for for these young players to to develop and you know hopefully become great NBA players. Coach, I, I know you want to hear. Uh, when I'm coming to a game, <clears throat> I'm coming on December 28th. <laughs> that's not just for you, Coach. That's for our listeners. Because, Coach, I know you want to know why I'm coming. Now, I used to live in L.A. The Lakers are coming. And, uh, Coach, um, I'm, I'm told that at that game, Scottie Pippen's going to be there. Shaq's going to be there. Even a guy named King Louie is going to be there. So, <laughs> <laughs> so December 28th, I'm in the building. I mean, it's it, it's got to be pretty funny. But, Coach, what what can you say, aside from me trying my best to get more people to come? Because I've enjoyed all the games I go to. I love coming over to, to watch the Spurs. What, Coach, how else could we get our listeners, our local and surrounding areas, excited to come in case those names didn't sell them? <laughs> how, how do we get <laughs> well, them out? Well, shoot, we got to get, get you on a microphone first of all. So... Uh, <laughs> No, I, you know, I think uh, to me, I think what makes it special is, uh, you know, you can look back and whether it's, you know, Keldon Johnson or, you know, whoever, whoever you want it to be like they, they're watching players that are going to go on to become really great NBA players. Yeah. And the difference is, you know, when they're NBA stars, unless you have a lot of money, sit, you know, sitting that close to them having access to them, getting to know them as people, like that's just not going to happen. And so I think what makes makes Austin so unique is, you know, a family has the opportunity to, to see these guys up close and to generally get to know them, you know, and that's, I think that's what's great. And especially in our organization where community is such a priority, but you can develop like genuine relationships with these guys. And in a lot of ways they need it, you know, like they're young and they need a support system as well. So it's just so, it's so unique in that sense. So that's where I would encourage everybody, Uh, you know, you're going to see players in five years from now, you can be like, you know, you remember when we had CD Sissoko over for dinner, (laughs) you know, and, and like he's, He's playing in an all-star game, NBA all-star game right now. You know, like it, it could be that. And so, you know, for I, I think, in, you know, in terms of affordable family entertainment, uh, there is just such a unique experience. And we've seen it. We've got some young kids who now show up at our practices and, you know, help rebound for us before the practice. And it, it's just a level of access that you could never have with an NBA team. Well, that tees things up perfectly because coming up after the break, we've got a family four-pack of tickets we're going to give away for Sunday's game against the hated Rio Grande Valley Vipers. (laughs) (laughs) So uh, we've got that coming up. So after the break, we're going to have a trivia question. We'll get some tickets to some uh, fans to go out and watch uh, the Austin Spurs in Rio Grande Valley on Sunday. Uh, But, Coach, I I, want to ask you real quickly um, before before we let you go and actually get your team prepared to play. But that is, the Austin Spurs organization um, has a great history. Obviously, um, the, the great, the late, great Dennis Johnson, um, Quinn Snyder um, has come through as the coach. Um, right now, you're here as well as the general manager. 
Brent Berry. Um, and and tell, tell me a little bit about working with Brent Berry um, and, um, have, have, uh, you know, the Berry name in basketball is, is – it's, it's pretty large. Uh, so t- talk a little bit about that and what that's meant for the organization. Bones. <laughs> <laughs> well, first and foremost, Brent is a fantastic human being um, and and also a really interesting guy. So before we dive into all the basketball <laughs> stuff, uh, you know, he, he taught himself how to play guitar as an adult. He's got a, you know, he's got a rock band that performs. He can do magic tricks at the <laughs> dinner table. Like, you know, this is, this is a well-rounded individual um, that goes well beyond basketball. But, uh, but certainly, you touched on it. I mean, his his experience um, as a player, mm-hmm. you know, having been around the game for so long, uh, such a great asset uh, for our organization. Um, you know, I think it. I think for the players, there's a automatic credibility that he has, and his ability to, you know, pull a guy aside and give pointers and help them navigate uh, life in the G League. I, I think is invaluable. And even, you know, even for myself, just being able to kind of spitball ideas on him, uh, you know, kind of tap into his experience and the coaches he's played for uh, has been really helpful f- for me. So. You know, we're lucky to have him uh, a part of our organization. And, um, you know, obviously uh, you, you touched on it. His his name and family name, uh, you know, carries a lot of weight. But, you know, he himself, uh, I, I think, is you know, doing a tremendous job. So why haven't we seen Brent's band at halftime? Can we, <laughs> <laughs> can we get that? <laughs> hey, 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 you know what? I have asked the same thing. So, okay. you, you know, Stay on it. Stay on it. We need a halftime show from Brent's band. If he's not coming from the free throw line, I don't want it, Coach. <laughs> that's, that's it. Coach, uh, I love it. The, the access that you're referring to, uh, I'm, at, I'm there at a game in front of my family. My wife didn't know who he was, but uh, only 1996 slam dunk. Uh, winner uh, I approached him and had a conversation he was approachable so you were talking access to the players you got to sell Brent Berry to our listeners too because he he had a conversation with me he didn't know who I was I'm five foot five he could have like get out of here little man yeah, you have to share that <laughs> no nah, it's it, it, six seven <laughs> standing next to five five my wife had jokes about that but uh it was it was so so he's approachable he's a nice guy because you you started with off the court so I just wanted to say that too is you know, he didn't know me I, and and I appreciated the, the the quick talk. He didn't seem like he was trying to to brush me off and and hurry up and and, and run off to the side. So um, there's that kind of access and coolness about him as well. But I but the the, the other only thing I want to ask, Coach, is uh, let I need I need this I need this juicy stuff, Coach. <laughs> Does he have a picture of him in the dunk contest in the warm ups, skying from the free throw line? Is that in his office? And is it blown up? <laughs> I feel like uh, it is. To be honest, he is he is extremely humble oh. about all of it, and he's well, not disappointed. <laughs> yeah, I am. Well, well, well I, I will share a little tidbit. So I threw we have we have a, a group text chat, and I threw in. You know, the other thing you got to remember is that he did the crip walk after oh. West Side. <laughs> West Side. Uh. He's an LA LA Clipper, so he, you got to Snoop Dogg approved. You got to yeah. give it to the fans. Yeah, so I threw the, I threw that video into into the group chat, and it was like it was like crickets, like no, no response from anybody. So I I learned my lesson there. Um, but yeah, I mean Brent Brent is you know he's so humble, it really doesn't bring up uh, that stuff. And to be honest, like you know we've got so many young people here. I don't know how many like even know. So yeah, yeah, it, 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 you know what I mean, like. Uh, so I'm really the one that's constantly like bringing that up and like, man, you know, like, and they kind of look at me crazy, but, uh, but I'm with it. You know, let's get it. Let's get a free throw dunk entrance and, and, <laughs> you know, hand, hand, hand them the guitar and let them go to work. 
Well, Coach, um, we really appreciate you joining us. We'll let you get to shoot around. Uh, once again, um, Will Voigt from the Austin Spurs, uh, the G League team based out of uh, out of Cedar Park, out of the uh, Cedar Park Center, the HEB Center, I believe it's out, called now. It mm-hmm. was it's Cedar Park Center when it went open, but HEB's name's on it. So uh, <laughs> the HEB Center, a great place to watch sports. Yeah. Um, get out there, support the Spurs. And like I said, coming up at, just after the break, after the top of the hour, we're going to have a trivia question a family four pack to head out and go watch Austin and the Rio Grande Valley Vipers play this weekend on Sunday out at uh, the HEB Center. So, Coach, good luck to you and your team. We appreciate you coming on with us. Yeah, thanks for having me, guys. Thanks, All right, coach. there you go. Good we got you in the studio, yeah. Coach. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds good. Yeah, shoot around. He's got, yeah, we got to get him in the studio, yeah, though, one of these studio. days. That's right. All right, appreciate okay. it, Coach. Okay, see you guys. All right. So, uh, the Will Voigt, we appreciate uh, the Austin Spurs giving us access. <laughs> Co- Coach yeah. said the group chat is fair game. Yeah. <laughs> no, fact. I like you said you got crickets, though. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Oh. I would have I put a little, little laugh emoji at least. Yeah, like. but, but remember the position that Brent Berry is as vice president of all operations. Do you yeah. want to laugh? You can crack it. You can crack a chuckle. Well, yeah, I, exactly. I appreciate Coach going for it. Exactly. Exactly. Well, we, we certainly appreciate him coming on with us and the Austin Spurs giving us access. Us and we hope to continue that for, for uh, our fans. I hope you guys look at how amazing of a coach he is because think about it he's got a 6'9 guy that's a forward center and he's allowing him to shoot 13 three pointers. Yeah, like that's that's exciting, that's fun basketball. Y'all got to get out and y'all got to come see it. All right, we need to get to a break. We're gonna come back on the other side. Like I said, we've got a giveaway for a family four pack of tickets to give away at the top of the hour. Uh, we'll come up with a trivia question. That's why we have Corey Mosen. Uh, with us, is he can, comes up with all the trivia questions. <laughs> so it'll, it will likely be Spurs related. So yeah. most of you should be should I got have one. a really good chance. So yeah. oh, all right, yeah. so we'll come back right after this here on KAZI eighty eight point seven, and we're back on the fans' view KAZI eighty eight point seven. Travis Kent, Douglas Washington, Corey Moe from KVU twenty four. Yeah, Jay Hunt behind the board. We appreciate that, and well, like I said, we appreciate Will Voigt and the Austin Spurs for having him on. Um, and we've got a family four-pack of tickets to give away for Sunday's game. Um, let me look at the schedule here. Hold on. Schedule says Sunday, um, five, uh, 4 o'clock, 4 o'clock Central. So 4 o'clock, the Rio Grande Valley Vipers will be out at HEB Center to take on the Austin Spurs family four-pack of tickets. We've got a trivia question from the great trivia master, Corey Moe. Wow, what a title. What a title. <laughs> I got that? Oh, man. A lot of pressure now. But, yeah, a trivia question for y'all. If you want these tickets family pack. So we talked about the guy a couple times during this interview with Coach Voigt. And the question is, who is the newest acquisition for the Austin Spurs? He recently flew in last night. He'll be playing tonight. Give you a little hint. His first and last name starts with a D. All right. So we, we mentioned him in, in the interview. 512-836-2887. You can get your calls in, Mr. Oklahoma, after these after these people are done. I, hey, Mr. Oklahoma, if you want to hey, yeah, up, I say, you can, you can get your call in. Yeah. Uh, but uh, Mr. Oklahoma, just wanted you to know, because I know you called in uh, before the interview, um, that we're going to open it back up for you uh, just after this. But 512-836-2887, get your answer in for a family four-pack of tickets Sunday afternoon out at the HEB Center in Cedar Park. Mr. Oklahoma, Mr. Oklahoma he's got the hardest thing. If he wins it, he's got to figure out three other people to take with them. Yeah. Ah, uh, th- this guy, he, one, he rolls alone. One, two, uh, three. Uh, I see what you, that would be, that would be, that, with him? Yeah. That would be fun. Yeah. <laughs> that would be fun. Uh, here's the problem, though. If we were there at the game with Mr. Oklahoma, no pressure, Mr. Oklahoma, <laughs> but if we were there with them and they put us on the Jumbotron and they, it's a bro, bro hug moment, I ain't hugging Mr. Oklahoma. <laughs> I ain't no Sooners fan. <laughs> one of y'all gonna have to take the high road. That's crazy. Nope, no love. Wow. They beat the Longhorns. So, Travis, oh, that'd be a great moment if a UT fan like you and Miss Oklahoma could hug, bro yeah, it out sure. on, the, on, the, on, the, on the large screen. That would be a great moment of understanding sure, in the world. Certainly, certainly. So, so you're go, you, you would do it? 
Yeah, oh, yeah. Oh, well, just see, I knew you'd take the high road. 512-836-2887. You can get your calls in to answer the trivia question. The, Spur- the Austin Spurs' newest acquisition is whom? He will be suiting up tonight. We talked about him during the interview, so you can get your call in for those tickets. Um, but uh, we've got a lot of other things we need to talk about. Yeah. Um, namely, I, before we talk about it, just want to mention, um, started on Wednesday, Bally Sports Southwest, for those of you that have it, Texas High School State Championship Games are taking place. Yeah. want to give a shout, quick shout out to a little town. That is five miles from the little bitty town where I was born, the Malakoff Tigers. Ah. Take down Franklin. Uh, Franklin, defending state champion, class 3A Division 2? 3A Division, <laughs> 3A Division 1, I oh, believe. Okay. 3A All Division right. 1. Franklin won last year. Shout out to Franklin, my good friend uh, Jamie Grant. Um, it's not her last name anymore. She's married. Her son is the quarterback for Franklin. Won a state title last year. They lost to Malakoff, though, 14-7 to um, this year. So, shout out to Malakoff Tigers um, as I grew up next door to them in the little bitty 500-person town of Trinidad, Texas. Could you tell me what Malakoff is? I've never heard that name before in life. And if a school's named after, is it someone I should know? You no, know, I don't know the origin okay. of Malakoff. Right. Um, if you say it incorrectly, you can call it a cocktail. It'll be a... Molotov, <laughs> Molotov it's cocktail. A, I mean, that's what it's, I was. It's very <laughs> close. That's what I was thinking about. Very close. That's, a, that's exactly what I thought. I, I'm just going to guess and say it has Indian heritage. Um, it is uh, Malakoff, Athens, Trinidad, all are on the south side of Cedar Creek Lake, over in east, sort of central Texas. Yeah. So, um, you know, it, it's near a lake. Um, I'm sure. I'm just making a wild guess here that, uh, yeah. that it has some some uh, Native American um, history to the name. I was but curious. That's just that's just my guess. No, so. no, it, it's it's legit. Uh, so when when Malakoff gets it, are you guys supportive for the other small schools like that, or you you guys still hate their guts? And- okay, so I, I still hate their guts. Okay, all right, all right. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> Yeah, um, <laughs> just to clarify. Yeah, just he clarify. was quick. Yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't want anybody. I still remember beating Malakoff in the <gasps> regional basketball tournament when I was playing little dribblers in sixth grade. Oh, that counts. Mm. That uh-huh. counts. Not a little dribbler. And that it was a heated match. We had beat them uh-huh. in the uh, preliminary rounds and then faced them for the finals to go to nationals, and we defeated them again by Ooh. one point. Shut the door um, on them. So uh, yes, I. Uh, they were making I, travel plans. They were. They were making travel plans. <laughs> and and Travis, the crossover Kent, said, nah uh <laughs> <laughs> I took a f fi- I took a finger to the eye in that game. Oh. Sheesh. Um, Battle scar. Had and yeah, I yeah. was already a pretty midland free throw shooter anyway. Mm. Uh-huh. Had to go to the free throw line. Not when I tell eye. the story. Yeah, that That's the only way <laughs> when I tell the story, the only way they could stop him was the poke him in the poke eye. In the eye. Right. And say, he can't beat us as a Cyclops. <laughs> <laughs> the depth perception will be off if he's only right got there. one eye. That's that they were trying to take you out. Yeah, that's, that's so right. respect to you and your game. And yeah, I that's that's so cool that you have that memory. Yeah, yeah. That's the I good mean, stuff, man. That's sports. I can't remember what I had for breakfast yesterday, but I can remember. <laughs> I can remember. That's my uh, my uh, uh, my 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 parents, my close friends, will always tell you that I have I have very little knowledge of anything else except sports related stuff stuffed into my head. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I don't see what's wrong with that. I don't have any problem yeah. with it either. I'm not judging. So, look, yeah. man, I'm bad with birthdays. Yeah. Don't ask me when your birthday is. Gmail, my, my Gmail calendar helps me out. Yeah, oh, facts. And, yeah. and those Facebook, Facebook bro. reminders, too. Facebook. Corey, you use Facebook? Like, no, like, I don't. Okay, because I, I was about see? I just get the I notification. As, as, a right. pe- as a people manager, I also want to thank HR departments for, <laughs> yes. for sending you an email <laughs> yeah. when someone's birthday is coming up as well. And you look like the boss exactly. in front of them. They're like, oh, Travis, you remember? Exactly. Thank you, Mr. Kent. <laughs> we got a caller on the line, though. We're going to jump in and talk to Mr. Oklahoma. Mr. Oklahoma, yes, you there? Sir, how y'all doing? Good. How are you doing? Great. Uh, okay. I'm not. I'm not a Spurs fan. I don't want to try to win those tickets. I'm a. <laughs> I'm a. 
Okay. I'm a Rockets fan. Do you like basketball? Right. You like basketball. Just I like basketball. I like basketball, but I'm not trying to win a ticket because I like, you know, I look at the Spurs, but well, I am a Rockets fan. Well, you know, the Rio Grande Valley Vipers have a uh, relationship with the Houston Rockets. When the Vipers won their um, G League championship in 2019, mm-hmm. Um uh, what really that it. that Houston Rocket bear that wears the, the their mascot went down to the games. Mm. Yeah, so yeah, just a yeah. little trivia yeah. for you. But yeah. but I but I what I really want yes. to talk about, guys. What what have y'all seen the SEC? You know who y'all got to play and Schedules. who we got to play. Yep. Yes, sir. Yep. Yep. Have seen. Oh that. my goodness. Have seen that. Um, you know. Um, when, 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 when you were talking about Texas and Oklahoma moving to the SEC, and this has been the, this has sort of been the narrative that SEC fans have um, permeated over the years, grown to a mythical proportion mm-hmm. of, well, yeah, you guys, you guys, yeah, your cute little conference over there, but you don't have to lace it up against these great gargantuan teams every week like Mississippi State and Vanderbilt yeah. and Kentucky and South Carolina. Yeah. Um, and, you know, and, and I'm, I'm, I'm obviously saying some of that tongue-in-cheek because, look, year in and year out, Florida, Georgia, LSU, Alabama, Auburn, uh, Tennessee are going to have athletes that match up athlete for athlete with you. Mm-hmm. Some years they're better. Some years they're worse. Mm -hmm. Um, Then the rest of the conference steps up here and there. The Mississippi schools will step up here and there. Um, You know, South Carolina will step up now and again. Kentucky has had a pretty good run under one of the Stoops brothers. Um, They've had a pretty good run of quarterbacks. Uh, They do have a their quarterback from last year is an NFL starter right now in Will Levis. Um, But the the fact remains that. Everybody puts on cleats, one cleat at a time, mm-hmm. and so you look at Now, here's the, the, the part, though, that is real, and that is name recognition. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's name recognition is really what the SEC has been built upon, um, and, it's, and that is real. It, it, is, it is a reality that if you turn on a television set, or someone just asks you which game you're more interested in, there are names of some schools that are going to interest you more than names of other schools, regardless of how well they're playing. Yes, sir. I, 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 I made a jingle that I used. I moved here from Georgia, mm-hmm. and my jingle that I made and I sung to my wife, Georgia Bulldogs come in to town. <laughs> That's I'm excited about that. <laughs> yeah. They're coming. That's a jingle, bro. I am excited for that game. Yeah. And I can't wait. Well, that's just Can't wait. with the schedule, though, and, you know, we, we can dive into this. Mm-hmm. Uh, you talk about the Georgia game, but, man, what a two-week stretch for Texas. Oh, my gosh. Because yeah. before yeah. that, they have yeah. OU. And then after that, they got, Miss- they, they got, they got Florida. Michigan. Yeah. Oh, man, am I talking about? They got Florida at home. We talking about Florida. We got Florida. We talking about Florida. They got Florida at home, man. Do you see what's happening over there in Florida? Did you say Michigan? They look horrible. <laughs> But I mean, man, that two week stretch. They're, they're, Texas is lucky to have that bye week before OU and Georgia. So yeah, well, you know, Texas, Texas they have two bye weeks, right? Yeah. Everyone has yeah. two bye weeks. Yeah, yeah. Le- next year so is everybody a everybody have two bye weeks. Next year and is what they it, call man. a long year because um, Thanksgiving falls on like the twenty eighth of the month. Um, something like that. Maybe the 29th. Thanksgiving is late yeah, the 28th. The 28th. Late in the month. Yeah. So they call this a long year. So it is a 14-week season as opposed to a 13-week season where you would normally have one by week. Teams will have two by weeks to play their 12 games. Okay. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And, man, I, you know, I am so glad to be at the Big 12. I am so glad. <laughs> oh, my goodness. What? You know, because I'm going to tell you, Dick Venable, he's going to have to do a lot better, man. Hey, He's Al- going to have to do a lot better. Week 13, Alabama at Oklahoma. Yeah. Mr. Oklahoma, come on. I, I, can, can, we, can we give the SEC some credit here? Um, because – they really could have 
stacked the schedules on the opposite side, right? They yeah. could have made, they could have asked or made OU go to Tuscaloosa. Yes, sir. And Texas go yeah. to Athens. Yeah. But they threw yeah. them a bone. Yes, they did. And said, we're, we're, we're going to be fair about this. We're going to let you guys have your, your marquee game. Um, now, Texas is going to go to A&M. But, look, I'm, I'm going to be the first to say as a Texas fan, A&M deserves to be the team that hosts the game first. Yeah. They they move to the SEC first. Mm-hmm. This is their conference we're moving into. They should get to host the first rem- the first game of the re- uh, renewal of the rivalry. I agree Got with no all of that. Got no issues with it. I, as a fan, sorry, Mr. Oklahoma, but as a yeah, fan of living in this town, all the rest of us, Georgia's coming. Florida is coming. We got some yeah. amazing home games next year in little old Austin. This is going to be so awesome for us who are Longhorn fans. But, Mr. Oklahoma, I would like to kind of go back. I just wanted to say that for our people, but I did want to go back to you guys. So, is that the is that the game you're most excited about next year? Is Alabama coming to town? No, not really, man, because oh. we, we got a still I can't, you know, I don't have the schedule in front of me, uh-huh. but I see the schedule on TV. But, man, we got some tough games, too. Yes, you do. And I tell you, Brett Bennifer is going to have to do a lot better, man. We're going to have to get a lot tougher. Well, your, your you schedule know. ain't – hold on. You know, I got to – every phone call, I got to poke Mr. Oklahoma. Mm. Sir, <laughs> we, got a, we got a hard schedule. Week 10, y'all playing against Maine. Right. Yeah, doing? Well, I mean, you know, but 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 but, 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 it, but it's not our fault, doesn't it? We have to go by the schedule. They put Maine on our oh. schedule, so we have we can't jump over Maine to play a harder schedule. We got to play who's in front of us. No, they pick Maine. They they pick <laughs> who's the they? Maine. You mean the school president, the athletic director? What are you talking about? They don't about? pick the conference schedule, but they they pick the out of conference. You schedule. won't force they nobody. Shovel that down your throat. Well, so and and, and look, I, and this is one of the things about the SEC that's always been debated, right? Uh-huh. Is they decide to have their this off week yes. late in the season, yes. and so they they play they play these FCS schools, <laughs> they, they play schools that they yeah. they have no business playing, but they do it on purpose. One, they they tell everyone we play a tougher co- schedule than everybody else, so we need a break later in the season, and oh by the way. You can't schedule a team against another um, FBS team that late in the season because they're all playing conference games. And so your only choice is to dip down and play the weak sisters of the poor um, or, or, you know, some school like that. And, and, and the main black bears are, <laughs> are one of those teams – where you're gonna? That's all you I'm can sorry. schedule. I'm sorry, Mr. Oklahoma. He didn't have to tell me. Remind me of the mascot. I used I used to live up in the Northeast. Yeah. I, I'm, I'm I'm impressed that you knew that. Oh <laughs> my gosh, Mr. Oklahoma. They went all your street cred. The main black bears. Come on. But you know, te- you know, this Texas <laughs> doesn't have one. Texas does not have a late season that's a non-conference game. They <clears throat> they loaded all theirs up in the early season. Now it'll be interesting to see if the SEC allows Texas to continue to do that. So Texas non-conference. Conference. It's Colorado State. Oh, by the way, some team called Michigan. Yeah, yeah whatever. Um, and yes, sir. Whatever. Yes, whatever. Whatever. And Louisiana. Yes. Louisiana. You, yeah, you see that, you. You see that Mr. Oklahoma? What he, let, me, let, me, let me translate that to you. What he said is, when the Longhorns enter the fight, they stay in the fight. You see that? We, we don't take a knee. Monroe. They get into the fight. They stay into the fight. They, they bite into it, and they keep biting all the way to the end of the season. Well, that's good. <laughs> and seven, that's good. seven home games that's next year good. as well. But I'm mm. just telling you, man, uh, and another thing, man, that transfer portal, Ooh. it's going to be, it's man, up. it's hurting yeah. some teams and it's helping some teams. Yeah. It's popping already. Yeah, it's going to be every year. Any, it's, any, it's any, yeah, it's going to be every year. Any rumors because for that, Oklahoma? That, that second string Corey? quarterback for Texas, where do y'all think he's going to go? Uh, I think he goes back out west. Goes back to his hometown, either USC or UCLA. Hmm. Yeah. Mm, I've heard Oregon State. Oregon State's in the mix. Them. Also, Syracuse is in the mix as well. And so, uh, it'll be interesting if he goes to Syracuse. I actually follow Malik Murphy. That's who you're talking about. Malik Murphy, former backup quarterback yeah. for the Texas Longhorns, announced he was going to transfer two days ago. Uh, and, you know, it is something that was riding on the wall. 
We all talked about that. We knew that because Arch Manning is still on the roster and Quinn Ewers looks like he's going to be coming back next year. So just not enough time to play for a kid that's about to be a redshirt sophomore. What's up, guys? I see you itching at the bite right now. I have to while you're and Mr. Oklahoma's on it. So I got two things. So the first thing, I'll do this first one first. Mr. Oklahoma, uh, y'all, War Eagle, y'all got to go to Auburn. Um, Did you see what they just did in Alabama? Did you see that? Oh, my gosh. Yeah. I'm sorry for you in advance. But I want to know next. I want you and Corey to tell us this. Tell Travis and I what y'all got on Houston at Oklahoma. What y'all got on that game? Who y'all rooting for? Well, you know, I'm, I'm, well, I'm, I like both teams because I'm from Houston. But, uh, so who you rooting for? You know, for? I, probably, I prefer Oklahoma <sighs> because cause Houston has a new coach. Willie Fritz. Yep. <sighs> Too right. lame. That you so, don't forgot where but he I came mean, from. You know, I, prefer, I prefer Oklahoma, but if Houston beat Oklahoma, I wouldn't be too mad about that. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'll let you off the hook on that one. I thought you forgot where you came from. Uh, Mr. Yeah. Mose from KVU, yeah. what say you? Well, who do I want to win the game? Yes, sir. I mean, I don't really – you age. I, mean, okay. I don't, I don't I really have a dog you see that, Oklahoma? Mr. Oklahoma? That, that's, that's, that's a real one. That's someone who don't yeah. forget where they came from. <laughs> he don't believe yeah, it, wanna, but he's rooting for it. <laughs> I think, hey, yeah, hey I'm, I'm not going to say I don't believe it. Oh, Willie Fritz, he's a sensational coach. If you see the way he's turned around yeah. Tulane yeah. in a matter of two years, yeah. yes. I think it's yeah. – and that's Tulane. You know, not to knock on Tulane, but it's like it's easier to recruit to U of H than it is to Tulane. I'm sure. And the talent around the city – Compared to Tulane and UH, mm-hmm. completely different. So if Willie can get in there and, and hone in on Houston recruits yeah. and own Houston the way kind of SMU did a couple years with Dallas, have billboards up around the city yeah. saying stay home, if he really dives into that, I think he's going to be very successful in a quick amount of time. What have we always said yeah. about all the coaches at Houston? You can recruit with a bus pass. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 That's a good one. Just come down the street. I want to I want I want to bring up a little something about Dallas, man. Uh-oh. Because I noticed that when the Cowboys go to Philly, the Cowboys have a lot of calls against Dallas. Uh, I mean when 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 Philly when Philly come to Dallas, we, they have some calls, but not many Philly do against Dallas. They had about 12, 13 calls against Dallas. <laughs> and that's why Philly be winning a lot. <laughs> and I'm serious. <laughs> That's the way, but see, y'all don't pay attention like I do, like in the third and fourth quarter. Man, Philly, y'all just have a lot of calls to get Philly, man. I mean, I say, God, show me. You can't even, you can't even blink your eye, man. They call, they call a penalty. I say, you got to be kidding, man. Love it. I love but it. But you know, when they're in Dallas, it's the they're supposed to play. You know. You do know Jay Hunt is running the board, <laughs> right? Yeah, I know Jay Hunt. Right? You okay, almost he, made he, him he, get on the mic. And that is I hard to do. Hit me. I ride I this hit guy. Me, Every I show, I ride him, <laughs> and he's never gotten on the mic. And you had him close. He actually touched the mic and pulled it close. So well done. I Because <laughs> I respect you so much more. Because, you know, I know that game when they was in Philly, I said, God, Lee, man. And then they played in Dallas. I mean, they had some calls against them, but not that many. Mm-hmm. Okay. You know, but that's the way I look at it. I want to say one more thing before I get off the air. Okay. Hey, man, that state football game, the, the Texas State, they own as we speak. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. facts. Getting so, y'all need to check that out, man. I watched that game between uh, North Shore Westlake. Man, that North Shore gets strong in that fourth quarter, boy. Oh, uh, did you go out there? <laughs> no, I was. I saw it on TV. TV. Yeah, on TV. I'm, I'm just asking. Just asking. <laughs> no, 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 man. You know, you know, I don't mean no harm, man. But I'm just saying, man. I'm gonna tell you that North Shore is tough. That defense, that defense yeah, is I bad, to, boy. I tried to say it. I mean, last week we picked North Shore to win. I, I was. Yeah. I was. I was yeah. surprised. Um, I mean, they made. I don't believe this is this Westlake offense is as dynamic uh-uh. as it has been over the last decade or so. Obviously, at the quarterback position, they're not they're not as varied um, as they can be. In other words, balanced um, a quarterback who can run Ellinger type, right? <laughs> yeah, you know mm-hmm. where where he he can run the ball, but he can still throw the ball fairly accurate. And by the way, that was a I was sitting in my patio watching that game. I felt the same yeah. wind that was blowing out of the field. So I understand that they were having trouble throwing the football. 
Um, but also, you don't have the dogs on the outside like you usually do. No, you, you're you know? right. You're so right. even going back to last year, you have a kid in Jaden Greathouse yeah. who's playing at Notre Dame. <laughs> Keaton Quebec, who's playing at Kansas. Yes. Like he had two D1 kids last year. I don't right. think you have a single D1 kid this year at receiver. So it's just just a tough turnaround. Yeah. And uh, hopefully they can get that talent in the in the skills position. I thought I thought it was two really good defenses playing against yeah, each other last exactly. week, though. That yeah. Westlake's defense yeah. deserves some credit because that Galena Park uh, offense can score some points in bunches, um, and they yeah. struggled for a big parts of the game. So who you got? Yeah. Who you got? Uh, Duncanville or North Shore? Man, I, oh, oh, man, Corey, man, that's a toss up, dog. That's a toss. Hey, hey, it's a. Uh, hey, no, uh, we, we not. Yeah, we yeah, not. Yeah, come oh, on, no, come no, on, no, say, no, it. Say, say it. We want to hear. That's a toss up, bro. Come on. That's okay. a, that okay. He just okay. changed the conversation. You we want to okay. okay. it. Make a decision. <laughs> man, okay, I got to make a decision. Yes. I guess I'm about to go with North Shore. Okay, okay. H Town. H Town. Yeah, I, I know. Yeah. Yeah. I'm I appreciate impressed. that. Now he remembers where he's from. Yeah, <laughs> but you did it for the kids. I know that's why he supports. Yeah, he did kids. it for the kids. For the kids. And so you know, you 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 know, uh, Fort Worth. They got three teams coming out of Fort Worth going to state. South Dallas, particularly yeah. three teams out of South yeah. Dallas. They which, got three which teams is awesome. coming out of there. So many, so many awesome. schools with, unlike Duncanville, but like the other two schools, they don't have the resources that a lot of different schools have. Just like South Oak Cliff, for them to keep going yeah. to state. Despite having not having the resources, it's a really great not only story, but now sure we can is. call it a great program by the way they've been able yep. to be so successful within three to four year span. Um, and so, yeah, it's really cool. And Texas actually had the kid out of South Oak Cliff, Malik Muhammad, at cornerback, yeah. that is playing as a true freshman a lot of minutes. And yeah. that just shows how much that program has come along for a, a true freshman at Texas to be getting a lot of the, minutes. Those, those of us my age who remember the great South Oak uh uh, South Oak Cliff basketball teams mm. of the yeah. late 70s from 70, yeah, 70 through 90 there there was n- no more dominant program than the South Oak Cliff's basketball program huh. so to see now their football program um, having a great run is 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 brings a lot of nostalgia look I you know I, I used to well I back back hey Mr. Oklahoma remember, remember back when we used to have to wa- open the newspaper to look for scores I hear you go um, yeah yeah I could not wait for Saturday morning to open up uh, the sports section and see how South Oak, uh, South Oak Cliff did on Friday night in their basketball game because it was yeah and, well, a, lot, know, and a lot of times it was 96 to 44 mm. I mean it was they were yeah. dominant Yes. And I used to go to the games at the draw, man. Mm-hmm. Yeah, back when, yeah. I back, used to go to the games down there. Back when the state championships were here in Austin. Yeah, state wow. championships, Miss those days. yeah. Missed those days. What's that other team that's coming out of Fort Worth? It, what, it wears the green? What is that? I DeSoto. can't think of it now. DeSoto. Yeah, DeSoto. Now, I'm going to tell you, man, DeSoto was bad back in the day. Football, basketball, and track and field. Yeah, they bad now. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. 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 You're right. They you're beat right. Duncanville this hey, year. Man, y'all have, hey, y'all have a good one, man. I'll talk to y'all later. All right. Appreciate it. All right. So, um, with that, we appreciate the call from Mr. Oklahoma. With that, we're going to get to a break. Come back on the other side. We got to dive into NFL. I mean, we, we Let's can't. Let's do it. We, we, we got to talk about last weekend's games, games coming up. Yes. What the playoff picture might look like right here on the Fans View KAZI 88.7. We are back on the Fans View, KAZI 88.7, Travis Kent, Douglas Washington, Corey Mose from KVU 24. You're and we tipping got, on Fofos. That's crazy. <laughs> Douglas on the board. Douglas on the board. Douglas on I the did board. That, I did that for you, Corey. Man, I wanted you to have that. Hey, man. That, I'm glad I did one. it. I'm glad I did it. I'm glad, I'm glad it hit. <laughs> <laughs> All right. We got, we got it to call. You're gonna, he's going to talk to him off air. So... Um, so NFL, we got we got to we got to dive into Dallas, Philadelphia from last weekend before we move on and start talking about uh, moving forward into uh, this weekend and what the race looks like now. Um, Philadelphia no offensive touchdowns last week. Yeah. Uh, this we look we, bad. we talked about the banged up defense for Philadelphia. Mm-hmm. Um, what a. Corey, what sticks out to you about the offense for Philadelphia right now? I think the lack of running game. 
just not being able to run the football as effectively as I did last year oh, is a is a big worry. Uh, and so that sets up the big throws to A.J. Brown. That sets up the crossing routes over to Devontae Smith because mm-hmm. of play action. But not being able to run the football and not ha- not seeing Jalen Hurts as like a legit running threat nowadays. Mm-hmm. Um, and even, you know, a couple weeks ago, Nick Bosa, after the San Francisco game, he basically told media, I hope the Cowboys watch the tape because we just put out a script on how to stop Jalen Hurts. Mm-hmm. You know, you keep him in the pocket. Don't let him escape outside. Make him escape up the middle or try to take steps forward, but then just collapse him and make him throw the football. Kind of like how Texas – handle Jalen Milrow in mm-hmm. their game against Alabama. Mm-hmm. Just make him throw the football in a collapsed pocket and force him to make the tight window throws. Uh, that's that's the big thing for me. Like, like I get what Joey Bosa says, but not everybody is, is San Francisco's defense. Exactly. Right? Not everybody has two all pros on the defensive end. But right? the Cowboys do. But the Cowboys do. And that's <laughs> the thing. Is right. Cowboys do. When, and, and we've said this about Texas all year long. When you can rush four most of the game, and when you do bring somebody extra, you only have to bring one extra guy. And you can still put pressure on the quarterback. If you're playing the backside with six defenders at least, you make it really hard for a quarterback to find his quick outlet. Mm-hmm. And when you rush four and you still have less than three seconds to throw the football, the game of football is very, very difficult for even the best quarterbacks. If you had to blitz Tom Brady... You were dead. Yeah. He's picking you apart. If you could rush four, if you had Dwight Freeney putting pressure on him, and then Robert, Mathis, Colt, and the Robert Mathis, and then you could stay in the football game because it's just harder to find those passing angles. And that's what we're seeing with Philadelphia right now. And, and the unfortunate part about all of that is, like, they have so much talent that you want to be able to see them be successful because they have so much talent and it doesn't make sense why they're not working because last year you saw it work and it's like is Jalen really has he really not progressed to that level yet Mm -hmm. so he can read a defense and make the right throw at the right time um in the right spot you would hope that you know after last season's success that he kind of took that next step but for defenses like San Francisco and and Dallas to exploit that flaw in his game um, is very concerning. And also, his fumbles are very concerning yeah, as well. They are. Not taking care of the football. And that's something he didn't do last year. Douglas, um, you know, Philadelphia wins the Super Bowl with a backup quarterback in, in, in uh, uh, Nick Foles. Yep. Uh, but admittedly, Carson Wentz and the 11 games that he played in mm-hmm. set the stage for Foles to be able to take over and finish off uh, that run. Now you've got Jalen Hurst at quarterback, a fantastic season last year. They fall short in the Super Bowl. You expect, you look at this team and you expect that, well, we're going to see them as – top contenders in the playoffs for several years. They are going to be in the playoffs. They are going to have a puncher's chance. If I don't think their defense is going to get much healthier. Um, maybe they can find some magic on the offensive line again to run the ball better. Um, but did are we seeing an exposing of Jalen Hurts slash this offense? Or are they just suffering from some sort of swoon i think they're exposed uh this was this was what i was why i had them so low if you guys remember coming into the season and but then they started winning all those close games Mm -hmm. and it covered up a lot Uh, they Mm -hmm. they won they won the tush push they won the one the tush push and so i thought that it covered it up i thought that they lost some coaches i didn't I, I certainly didn't think that you could lose the level of coaching that they had, mm-hmm. that institutional knowledge walking out that door. And then for them to, to start off like they did, it was as if my point was not valid. Mm-hmm. And now they're only they're only 10 and three. Mm-hmm. It's only three losses. But I don't think that anyone fears them. And that should tell you all you need to know for them going forward. Dallas did not seem like they were afraid. They were going at them. The game plan was so sure. I I, I know now that Philadelphia is looking up 
at the other teams. I think everyone is back on uh, San Francisco. I think nationally now with that wind, Mm -hmm. nationally people are respecting the Cowboys. Uh, Because, again, when you're smacking around the Commanders, you're smacking around the Giants, it's kind of hard. But I think now. Uh, Hey, I, I did want you guys to know, we got a caller. He doesn't like his voice um, on the radio, but he had some points that uh, I was hoping I could read off, okay. and uh, he wanted to get you guys' feedback on it. All right. Uh, so this is Johnny. Johnny says ESPN doesn't talk black quarterbacks enough, and he said that the Houston quarterback needs more love. He thinks that that Houston quarterback should be the MVP, and he wishes that ESPN and that most people would stop talking about Purdy or Allen and uh, Josh Allen. Uh, so he really wants to push f- for the Houston quarterback. And I, and I just want to offer you guys one thing. Cam Newton just came out, if you guys heard, and he made waves in the press. He's not Johnny, but he said Purdy, yeah, he called game him out. manager. So uh, you guys' opinion on the quarterback in Houston and the – Two black quarterbacks uh, that we haven't spoke of. Uh, so him and the other will be Lamar Jackson. What are you guys' opinion on the strength of those quarterbacks for MVP? And this is per Johnny. So thanks for calling in, Johnny. Yeah, thank you, Johnny, just for the question. Uh, and I, I will come out and say I feel like after the game against Denver, uh the talk was about C.J. Stroud. There was a lot of national mm-hmm. news outlets talking about him being an MVP conversation, him already wrapping up the Offensive Rookie of the Year award. Yeah. Uh, and so I, I do think during the right time, yes, the, the national media did talk about them. I, Dan Orlovsky did a whole breakdown of C.J. Stroud. Uh, but, you know, over the last two or three games, though, if I'm being an unbiased fan – he hadn't really deserved a lot of national attention the way he's been playing. Uh, and mind you, he had a lot of weapons out. Nico Collins got hurt against New York. Uh, Tank Dell got hurt the week before yes. against Denver. Like a, a lot of a lot of big time weapons. Dalton Schultz has been out for two or three weeks. Yep. So mm-hmm. I mean that that may be playing a factor why CJ's numbers are down. But I, I do think. Now, after the game against Denver, after the game against New York, especially last week, that oh. game was abysmal. Uh, there's some other quarterbacks, particularly black quarterbacks like a Lamar Jackson that has a better shot at the MVP. Yeah. And I've been saying Lamar and Tyreek Hill should be in the MVP conversation. Did, Unfortunately, Tyreek got hurt. We talked but, it last week, and, mm-hmm, and, I, mm-hmm. and I don't think Johnny caught that because I said – CJ uh, Stroud last week, and, and you guys didn't laugh at me. No, when no. I said it, uh, it's not. It's I not. La- I, I don't. So I, I was. Look, I, even had CJ Stroud not kind of fallen off with with his offensive weapons kind of st- stumbling down the stretch, not stumbling, get, getting injured and and having less weapons to work with. I never thought Stroud would win MVP as a rookie. He's going to win Rookie of the Year, mm-hmm. um, and they're going to give the MVP trophy to one of the teams that is really a Super Bowl contender. That's just that's just the way it works. I, I, look, I'm not, you know, that's why I think right now the momentum is squarely in Dak Prescott's yeah. uh, back pocket right now. If, if you look at the stumble that we just saw from Philadelphia, there are a lot. I listened to a podcast this week, um, Andrew Cataldi, who's a Hall of Fame, 50-year um, City of Philadelphia uh, sports talk guy. Um, he thinks there's no way that Philadelphia beats Seattle, and he thinks wow. they're going to they're lose one of the two games against the Giants they have left. Huh. Um, he, just, he, he thinks this def- that defense is done. There are no other place to find weapons, and he thinks the offense is stumbling so much right now that they just won't be able to find enough of a stride and that, that Dallas is going to win the East and replace them as number two, and he thinks it will be San Francisco and Dallas in the NFC Championship game. And if that's the case... If Dallas does find, a, you know, if if what we're seeing mm-hmm. in yeah. front of our eyes right now is the Dallas team that we see through the rest of the regular season into the playoffs, I like where you're going, I think it's hard to deny Dak Prescott. Now, it, Brock Purdy from his record will have a, an argument, uh, but his stats too. The stats, yeah. Let's not. No, no. I mean, because he's he's been throwing over 300 yards. Yeah, but he's still averaging 245 a game. But lately, and, 
but lately, but but lately, he's still not throwing for as many yards a game as Dak is. Of course, of course. That, see, Dak. I just want to put out there, like, let's not act like Purdy hasn't been. No, no, no. Up numbers. No, I, I, look, about. look. I, this the, is the Cam Newton effect. This yeah. is this is not, he's not a game, game man. This is not last year when he threw for two nineteen a game yeah. and, yes. and 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 yes. and and took him through. Yes. He's actually. Uh, that that three game loss, and we talked about the fact. Didn't have the weapon. You take Debo and Trent Williams. If you take the 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 best tackle and the best playmaker off of every team in the league, you're going to struggle those three games. I e Miami Dolphins. Yes. Correct. Tyreek Hill off the field, completely different offense. Correct. And two was getting the blame for that, which I don't appreciate because the offense runs through Tyreek. And so, but before before we leave it though, I just want to remind Johnny, and thanks for the topic, Johnny. Johnny, did you see where Travis was going? Now we are not the big network, we are not ESPN, but you see where Travis is going? Just remember this one point. To your point, if the MVP goes to Dallas, if if if. You have noticed that's a black quarterback. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So it's going to be there. No, it's not Lamar and no, it's not Stroud, but that would be the black quarterback I, and it'd be the MVP. So you, so, so you could see that. So don't forget that. Johnny. I, I think it's, it, it's, it's difficult. Um, when, when you talk about, are they talking about the black quarterbacks enough? The, the conversation really comes down to the fact that they're talking about Brock Purdy because San Francisco right now is the favorite to win the Super Bowl. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. How do you not talk about the quarterback of the team that's the favorite to win the Super Bowl? You kind of have, yeah. have to. So, so <laughs> yeah. now, here, here's where I will also admit, because, by the way, I just realized I haven't watched them play a game yet this year. <laughs> the Baltimore Ravens. Yeah. Lamar J- low key. They, I did. I they, did. Are, they, are, they are flying crop duster level over the NFL <laughs> yeah. right now. Yeah. Just out of everybody's radar. On top of the AFC. On top of the AFC. Right now, um, we you know if you go if you if you take a look we'll at the AFC, I mentioned them being my Super Bowl pick. Yes, I oh to I, come out of AFC. I did mention. If you that. ask me to handicap the AFC right now, I have them as the favorite to go to the Super Bowl right now. Mm-hmm. I certainly do. I think they on both sides of the ball play the most consistent football. I do not trust. Whatever is going on with the Chiefs right now, I don't trust them to be able to fix it. Since we're talking them, can I just do a little foreshadowing? Guys, two weeks from now, Ravens versus Niners. Oh, yes. Mm. And that, so that's a, that's a Super Bowl during the regular season. And it's, uh, it's, it's at the Niners, but uh, we're going to see it. And I'm looking forward to that. That yeah. would be a lot of fun. Y'all remember the last time Ravens and Niners faced off in the Super Bowl? Oh, no. I don't. Which one was that? That was a Harbaugh Bowl. That was, yeah. Oh, the Harbaugh's against yeah. each other. Mm-hmm. That was the, mm-hmm. the Colin Kaepernick. Colin Kaepernick. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I forgot who they played. It would be cool. It would be cool to see them play each other again. Um, but to the caller's point, though, I will say he also brought up Josh Allen, correct? Yeah. And so I, I agree with him on that point because the moment Josh Allen wins a game, <laughs> yeah, the bills all over the place. Why, why and, are we still talking Josh Allen? And I watched a video from Dan Orlovsky. Uh huh. And you know I I know I still don't know how I feel about Dan Orlovsky when it comes <laughs> well, to media. He ran out the back of the end. <laughs> yeah, that's say, all I, I, I don't know how I feel about him. I'm, I'm out on him on well, that. Someday to like him, someday I'm like, what are you talking about? But yesterday he mentioned how Josh Allen. A lot of people give him harp about the interceptions, mm. right? And so he broke down the last three Super Bowl champions and their quarterbacks. All three in the last three years have been top three in interceptions in the league, which I didn't know. And so he's saying that the whole conversation about Josh Allen throwing interceptions shouldn't be this big of a deal because the last three Super Bowl winners, they've been top three in the league in interceptions. And so Hmm. I say all that to say when it came to Dak Prescott, though, and Mm -hmm. Dan Orlovsky talking about Dak, that was Dak's problem, mm-hmm. was interceptions. It was a completely different narrative. And so if you're going to give that, that leeway to Josh Allen, I need Orlowski to give that leeway to Dak as well, who, by the way, hasn't been throwing interceptions. But the moment he does, Orlowski's all over the place. NFL Network's all over the place. ESPN's all over the place about how he turns the ball over too much. But when it came to Josh Allen throwing picks, now it's not a problem. And I don't, I don't like that when it comes to the narrative of Dak Prescott. I'll, I'll, I'll say this, um, I, because I do remember Orlovsky at the end of last year breaking down Dak's interceptions and talking about how C.D. Lamb needs to finish his routes. Mm. And, it, and, and, bl- and he was giving as much blame to the wide receivers as he was to Dak in those situations. I, I, I do remember that. I don't, I, I don't have 
good enough recollection to know to remember whether his overall take was it was Dak's fault more than those guys or whatever. But I do remember him breaking down the whole wide receiver issue. Um, but I, on the on the flip side of that, um, there is something to be said for quarterbacks, really high level quarterbacks that aren't afraid to take risks get rewarded more as well. Mm-hmm. And so we. Look, talk about Brett Favre. Yep. Maybe the most risk-taking quarterback that we've ever seen in our lives. That's the that's the name that's the name you think of when you hear the word gunslinger. I guarantee you that's what we all think. I mean, Brett Favre. I, I, if we go if we look actually with stats, how many single-digit interception years did Brett ever have? If you if you had to guess right now, the, his first year when he was on the bench in uh, <laughs> in Atlanta. <laughs> I, I mean, you would you would expect if I went back and looked at his stats, I would essentially expect to see. An average of about 32 touchdowns and about 13 picks every year. Yeah. Yep. That sounds like Brett Favre to me. Yes, it does. And I don't see the problem in that. And I don't no. see the problem in it either. And, I, and my, my That's thing nearly a like, pick a game. And my thing is just give credit where credit is due. Uh, if you're going to give credit to one guy, give credit to another guy. And you spoke about, like, if you're going to be a gunslinger, you're going to get picks. Mm-hmm. And you also get the great part of that. Right. You know, That's I, right. I want to go back to that Bills and Kansas City Chiefs game this past week. And I don't know if y'all saw the game, but the play that Josh Allen made on the sideline when he was cornered. Oh, my gosh. Sack, and he does a sidearm over the top to Latavius Murray, who, by the way, dropped that pass. That wasn't a catch. Right. Um, but they called it a catch anyways. I mean, only was, Josh Allen can yeah, make that It was play. amazing. Well, yes. to the Dan Arlovsky point, uh, just because I have it up, the top three quarterbacks in interceptions, Josh Allen, tied with Sam Howell from Washington, mm-hmm. and then Mac Jones, yeah. and we know he's not going. So then I'd, I would go one below that then. Let's take Mac Jones out. The next person is Patrick Mahomes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So last year, Patrick was a top three when it comes to winning the Super Bowl um, and, and interceptions. You know, yeah. and the year before that, I forgot who won in 2021. But that quarterback as well, mm-hmm. top three when it comes to interceptions. That's what he was saying. He was saying each year, oh, Matthew Stafford. That's, yeah, um, yeah. He was top three in interceptions that year. And so he, that was his point. You know, just the past three Super Bowl champs have been top three in interceptions that year. Mm. And so I was like, okay, that's that's a viable argument. And so the thing about all those three quarterbacks, though, they still got out there and won the game, you know, and, and won yeah. the Super Bowls. And so you so can have the interceptions, but you got to win the game. Those too. of us who watch college football and NFL, because there's, there's a big swath of people who don't watch college football that only watch NFL. Then there's those that only watch college, right? Yeah. And don't watch NFL. Right. And there's those, then there's those of us, which I still think are the most people, that watch both. Yes. But we see so much college football during the year, and the expectation becomes, Quinn Ewers, numbers this year, mm-hmm. um, 70% complete ratio for the season. Yeah. I mean, that's... That's crazy. That's crazy. That gets you to the league. Seventy-five percent completion ratio over his last five games. Thirty-two hundred yards passing. Of course, that's eleven games. He um, missed two games with injury and part of one game with an injury. Um, and uh, what seven interceptions for the season? Six interceptions for the season. So th- that's what we get used to. But you can't you can't necessarily carry that in the NFL and mm-hmm. think that that's gonna that's gonna fly. Um, if if you have a quarterback who only has five interceptions in the NFL, I, w- I would challenge you to say that he's also, his, his average uh, yards per completion is between six and eight yards per a completion. And that's not going to win you football games in the NFL. No. If you're not pushing the ball down the field, if your average per completion is not 12 to 14 yards, or really, I guess really 11 to 13 yards is probably more like it, and your average per pass is around eight yards or seven or eight yards a, a pass, then you're not taking enough chances. And your offense is probably struggling. Uh, and I, 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 just, I just think in the NFL, the expectation should be more in the 10 to 12 interceptions a year mark and probably around 66 to 68 percent completion ratio um, as opposed to really looking at the stats we see in college football which are off the charts yeah i mean it's just crazy it's it's video game numbers at, at college level and i and that's why you know i hate to bring him back up but that's why brock purdy is in the conversation for mvp mm-hmm. just looking up his stats 70 percent completion percentage mm-hmm. 
and only seven interceptions. Um, and his average completion is 10 yards. Mm-hmm. So, you know, he's not throwing it behind the line of scrimmage. Yeah, you know, he's he, not. He's going downfield, has a high completion rate, and less than 10 interceptions on the year. And leads the league in QBR. So, thus, that's why he's in the conversation. Do I think he's MVP? No. I think Dak is MVP. And, but and, I just want to throw out why and, and the so, national media is pushing him so hard. And that's why I would, I would, I would put Brock and Tua – in the in the in the same conversation, mm. um, because and I wouldn't. You wouldn't because they both have a receiver that you can throw an eight yard out pattern to that can take it to the house. Yes, and and I I just I think Debo and Tyreek are at such a level. I mean, I love I love CD Lamb, mm-hmm. uh, and CD Lamb can get you yards after the catch. Yes. but he's not going to get you sixty five more yards after the yeah. catch. <laughs> He's going to get you 25 more yards after the catch. Mm-hmm. I do think there's a, a, a difference between the weapons and what how your weapons can help you for Tua and Brock Purdy over what some of the and, – and especially Lamar, I think, probably has um, – Out of that group, they have, he has the least amount he, of Exactly. He has the least amount of help from the playmaking position. Yeah, yeah. So – even though OBJ, hey, he been looking throw, solid. Throw respect on throw OBJ, yeah. well, old, old man OBJ. Every time he hits the ground, down. I think he's hurt. That's and yeah. that's same. that's the hard part. Same. It is. That's the st- to stomach that. But he's I feel been, bad. I think he scored a touchdown in the last three and, games. And I always thought Isaiah Likely was an amazing backup. Um, yeah, perfect. Just backup. A great athlete. It's just that you can't take it from Mark Andrews because he's Mark Andrews. Mm-hmm. But. You saw what he did last week, nah, and facts. likely that if 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 anyone's been watching, one of my good fraternity brothers is a Ravens fan. Uh, I I've watched and have had a lot of Ravens talks. I knew about likely, and I don't think that offense is in trouble with likely. So I I still have them just as powerful as they were before. But I can't wait to see him against. I San agree Flair. though. And speaking about likely, I, I had a homie who covered likely at Coastal Carolina, oh. Gabe McDonald, a fraternity brother. Shanna Clears. Um, yeah. So <laughs> when he was at Coastal Carolina, he posted all the stats and all the highlights, and you know he was breaking records at Coastal. And so when he got drafted by the Ravens, you know I texted Gabe. I was like, Is he like NFL ready? Because I mean that talent from Coastal Carolina's conference to the big NFL, big difference. Big difference. Yeah. And he said, Yeah, he's a dog. Um, and so my thing though, like you said behind Mark Andrews, and you're not going to take his spot. No. But I just wish Baltimore would do more two tight end sets yes. like the yeah. Patriots used to do because, as you see, likely is a weapon. Now, I don't know if Lamar kind of prefers the three wide receiver sets compared to two tight ends. See, Maybe that's what it is. So I, I would say if, if I was an offensive play caller for Baltimore, um, I, I would stay away as much as I could from two tight ends on the field because I want the field as open as possible yeah. when we're th- coming back to pass um, or play or you know even you know one back play action is still effective but when you bring another safety down closer to the line of scrimmage if Lamar needs to use his legs to help you you've brought one more one more person into the play that that would be my thought process yeah, I can see that. but um, but I can see what you, what you're saying they they've got talented guys which you know we're seeing the Cowboys um, the evolution of the Cowboys offense from running the ball on every first down the first five games of the year mm-hmm. to now no, we're just going to throw the ball to C.D. Lamb every time we can, and we'll spread it to everybody else when possible. Yeah. The flip side of that is they are going more two tight end sets. We're yeah. seeing Schoonmaker on the field with um, Ferguson. Um, Ferguson more and more. And how about Ferguson, by the way? By, He's you a know, dog. There are, I be- it's my feeling that there are some offenses that are just very tight end friendly. And as long as you're a competent pass catching tight end, you can you can make a really good living in the NFL. And I think Dalton Schultz mm-hmm. was a really it was a was a, a good pass catching tight end and he got his paycheck from Houston to move on and yep. the Cowboys said, We'll let you go because we got a guy that's just like you right behind you. And kudos to them for knowing that they had Jake Ferguson yeah. was going to be the same type of security blanket for Dak Prescott that uh, that he was. So eight, eight targets. Yeah. Uh, the only other person that got eight targets was Pollard, and then yeah. of course you guys know that uh, CD Lamb had he's double digits. He got the most. But to get that to get that amount of targets, 
he, I, he's a weapon. I'm in, I'm impressed, and I, I say keep doing it. And he's nasty, too. Like, when it comes to just the way he handles blocks, yeah. the way he finishes blocks. Yeah. See the scraps he was getting in exactly, last week? Yes. Exactly. And you like that from a young player yes, you to be able to do that. And also, I saw a, a picture at practice this week. Uh, he put up a picture of um, Jordan Poyer, the safety for the Buffalo Bills, the yeah. team that they're going against this week, mm-hmm. during one of those machines where you run through and, you know, you stiff arm. Uh, yeah. And he put up a picture of his face <laughs> on one of the barriers. <laughs> so every tight end that goes through, you know, because that's the matchup, safeties and tight ends. So I think that's a that's a way to, like, man, he has it. And yeah. he knows how to get these guys fired up at a young age. Think yeah. about what kind of tight end that you want. You want one blocking on, on the run plays. You want one that is scrappy because mm-hmm. he's going he's gonna to commit himself to the block. He's not worried about what could happen after. He's yeah. like, I know what I got to do right now. I'm going to hit somebody. All right, guys. As much as I would like to continue this conversation, Giannis has got to get in here and get his show started. So we need to get out of here. Um, we appreciate the Austin Spurs and Will Voigt for coming in. Good luck to the Spurs tonight. They take on um, the Memphis franchise, which um, – I was doing a little research. Maybe we'll talk about this in another show, but um, they're playing in a – they're not playing for uh, wins and losses. They're actually just playing an exhibition season this year within the G League. Um, So I thought that was very interesting. I had no idea they did that. Yeah. Yeah, So – but it's more opportunities for guys to play, right? Mm -hmm. Like they're not playing for wins and losses. They're just playing. Um, And so – and they're they're running a full schedule, but they don't – whether they win or lose, they don't get a win or loss. They're not in the, the championship race or whatever. So um, I thought that was very interesting. But we appreciate the Austin Spurs. Good luck to you. Um, and we'll see you back here uh, next Friday right here on the Fans View, KAZI 88.7.